So animals have been in the news quite a bit recently, especially after CNN released its documentary of Blackfish, which profiled what was happening uh, happening in SeaWorld uh, with the abuse of some of these whales. And uh, it turns out that there is a black rhino that will be shot after a man paid $350,000 to do so. We have more details on that. Let's take a look. And this will be done tomorrow night. The Dallas Safari Club is holding a convention here in Dallas at the convention center. Tomorrow night, they will auction off this hunting permit from the Namibian government. And as you might imagine, it has sparked all sorts of the debate. The Safari Club says they're doing this to save the animal, while wildlife uh, conservation groups around the world are saying that this is a terrible idea. When you talk to the scientists and all just Sometimes having to sacrifice an animal for the overall good of the herd and of the species is what you really are trying to do. Honestly, I think it's a farce to say this is being done for conservation. I do agree that there is sometimes a need to manage wildlife populations in small areas, but there are less than 5,000 individuals left of this species. Instead of killing it, it could be moved to a different area, be used to bring in phototourism or ecotourism, something that doesn't kill the animal. So as you guys can see, issues like that are not black or white. Usually there are gradations, there are certain things to take into consideration. Conservation is one of the issues uh, that was brought up during this case involving the black rhino. Uh, the club that auctioned off the right to shoot this rhino sa uh, said that $350,000 will go toward conservation efforts and it's important to do so, to do that to protect these animals. But Mariana, do you feel that that's counterproductive. I mean, what, what would you say to that argument? I would say absolutely counterproductive. It's hooey mm -hmm. to even claim that. Um, I, I, I think it's extraordinary and grotesque and perverse that they are trying to uh, shift focus away from the murder of these uh, endangered animals. Last year, there were a thousand black rhinos that were poached, and it was the worst year on record. Hundreds of African lions are shot every year by American trophy hunters, and their uh, viable habitat has decreased by 75%. We're doing it to the elephants for the ivory trade as well. It's just, it's extraordinary. Sensationalizing slaughter and killing for sport do nothing but result in deaths of animals, sometimes in a very, very cruel way, and uh, they, it contributes to the decline of populations and uh, mostly of highly endangered species. So I would also caution people against just buying into the uh, justifications of you know, safari hunting clubs right. in, in Texas. Um, if you want accu accurate information that's up to date, I would, I would strongly suggest going to bornforusa.org. It's run by Will Travers and Adam Roberts, who are two of the leading uh, conservationists in the world, and they will be able to tell you what's really happening out there. Um, the killing of animals for their greater good or, or ours, that, that whole concept is very, it's bizarre to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, compassion and killing are diametrically opposed ideas. What about the argument that uh, black rhinos, especially males, become extremely aggressive once they get older, that they attack other younger males, and that's the reason why it's important to separate them and maybe even hunt them in this case? Well, I mean, that's one of the arguments that's been brought up, and I'm really curious to see what you think about that. Well, my father got very aggressive in his old age, and right. he attacks younger bucks on the street all the time with his <laughs> politics, and I don't see anybody gunning him down. I, I think it's a, a ridiculous argument. There are other ways that you can handle this. Um, you can you know, uh, send them to, sh to sanctuary. We have bulls that are separated from female uh, elephants in a sanctuary up north at Paws, and you don't have to resort to the murder of these animals just to you know, uh, solve a problem. There are yeah. other alternatives. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I also think that one of the most absurd things about this whole thing is that these are people that in the same breath will be totally okay with intervening in a natural selection process with these animals, but then on the other hand, condemn embryonic stem cell research. You know, like it's just absurd to me. Anybody that gets, that derives joy from the killing of another animal, I think, is just a moron. Well, I think know? the problem is partially in the language, and, and as you were saying, maybe getting honest what this is really about. The individual who won the black rhino auction, when he says that this is because he's helping with conservation or environmentalism, is not telling the truth. Just flat out. He may have interest in that, but I, I highly doubt that's his purpose. This is somebody who's a self-made man, made his money in Texas in oil, is a very, you know, kind of aggressive, interesting individual, and I think he wanted a trophy the same way in his life his success has been a trophy, and I think that that's where the argument comes in, is 
our complicated relationship with animals in the first place. Because yeah. um, you know, people that are supporting him are making the argument, well, if you eat meat, you shouldn't be worried about him hunting. And I think hunting for sport and for a trophy, and then under the guise of saying you're doing it for the environment, is that's pretty gross. If he wants to hunt and say, hey, look, look at me and my big swinging dick, <laughs> and I'm going to go out and I'm going to hunt and I'm going to get this trophy, then say it and believe yeah. it and stand by it and don't be a coward. If you're going to go hunt a black rhino, then don't be a coward while you're hunting. Say, right. this is the reason why I'm hunting and drop the microphone. Don't then get wimpy and go, oh, it's because I support the conservation because I highly doubt this individual also supports things like global warming and other things that he probably denies. So if he's right. such an environmentalist, then why doesn't he care about the, not just him using him as the royal he. Right. Why don't other hunters and people like that also support other environmental things? That's a good point, but let me jump in very quickly. You know, originally when he won um, the permit, uh, when he won the auction, uh, he wanted his identity be, to be concealed, right. mm -hmm. but right. someone leaked his identity and he started getting death threats. So right. he claims that he had to hire full-time security just to ensure that he and his family would be safe. So I could kind of understand why he wouldn't want to come out with guns blazing, mm -hmm. um, you know, saying like, hey, you know what, I'm doing this because I want to do it, you know, right. not because I'm trying well, to conserve these animals. Attack him anyway. People who disagree with what he's doing are going to say, "No, he's been getting death threats and people saying, oh, you want to hunt an animal, I'll go hunt you. I don't think him saying, well, I'm doing it for the black rhinos is really going to deter people from sending him these threats. Right. So I think it's more about having an honest conversation and saying that this is why I'm doing it and this is what we have the right to do and this is what hunting is all about and either try to get people behind hunting. And if you know in your heart you can't get people behind hunting and you think something's wrong with it, then maybe you shouldn't be hunting. Well, no. you, you had made a point about uh, wanting to have a trophy but it's going to be very difficult for him to get that rhino back into the country because our laws are not going to pr uh, permit that. And, you know, I just wanted to mention something else that was very interesting you made me think of. When I was involved in the Los Angeles Zoo effort to release the elephant, Billy, that's there, and sent him to sanctuary when they were building this pachyderm exhibit there, and the one of the major arguments was it's about conservation. It's about conservation. They were pouring $42 million into this facility for conservation. Mm -hmm. And the point that I made at most of the city council meetings was that that 42 million could have saved the lives of every elephant in Africa for 20 years. So you're saying, why didn't he take his $350,000 for the auction and then apply it to actually saving some animals rather than going on his little hunting excursion? Precisely. Right. That's yeah. exactly <clears throat> my point. So, Marianne, I want to ask you about, you know, this hypocrisy that some people feel that Americans have when it comes to animal protection. So on one hand, we do have factory farms, right? We do have factory farms that treat animals in the worst possible way. Yes. And then we'll turn to other countries like Japan, for instance, and how they fish for dolphins, and, and we'll judge them and we'll act as if what, what they're doing is barbaric. So why is that? Why is it that we are so quick to turn another cheek to what we're doing with our cows and, and, and our chickens, but when it comes to other animals, animals like whales or dolphins or black rhinos, we get so enraged. Well, I think it's it's human nature not to want to look at, at our flaws and point out the flaws in others. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that, though, I, I feel very hopeful because just in the recent years, let's just look at the past 10 years of history, the progress that we've made in the animal protection front has been extraordinary, greater than any other time in, in history. We're at a very important juncture right now. Uh, you know, in 2008, I'm sure you're aware, Prop 2 passed in California, which banned gestation crates and veal crates and battery cages and made the lives of the four point, point uh, I'm sorry, four to five billion animals that are raised for food in this country, which have no federal protection. Just think about the implications of that statement. Four to five billion animals raised for food without federal protection. What does that mean in terms of what could potentially go wrong for uh, human safety mm -hmm. and health. Well, right now they just shut down. I think it was a Tyson chicken plant, and they're looking at foster farms right now because they were teeming with roaches and disease, and there yeah. was that foster farms, which I actually got when that uh, E. coli and salmonella breakout happened a few months ago. I actually oh. got salmonella from chicken and had eaten foster farms chicken oh, yeah. and traced it and was sick, and then was frustrated because it was during the government shutdown, so they were saying there was no one to regulate it, but there was no one regulating it anyway. No one came back then after once the government got back with it and said, right. hey, we need to put some sort of regulations on the way we're treating our animals, because in the end, it's going to hurt our people. Well, we do have regulations, mm -hmm. though, for some animals. There's an animal, the Animal Welfare Act, mm -hmm. which protects animals that are in research labs and e exhibitions and pet trade, and there are 2.5 million animals that are used in research facilities. Right. But the AWA does not protect m uh, mice, rats, or birds that are used mm -hmm. in, in research. So there's a large number of animals that are going yeah. unprotected. I mean, fan protected there. Yeah, I think, I think as humans, we sort of have a moral imperative to help to do our best to alleviate the suffering of 
of animals, you know, and other people. And I think that there is sort of a, at this stage, a hierarchy, you know, like obviously dolphins are, you know, as intelligent and as social as humans, you know, by a lot of metrics. And so I think that like, obviously it's deplorable to see how they're treated, you know, in Japan. Um, I think that factory farms are awful. I also think that like meat is something that's healthy. You know, we've evolved to eat it. Um, and, and so I think it's sort of, part of being human and being a consumer to, to choose and vote with your wallet and not buy products from, you know, these factory farms and, and go with smaller farms, you know, where the animals are actually cared for and, and killed in, in humane ways. Um, the problem so is yeah, I think it's a gray area. I think it's complicated. And but I, think I think you said something very interesting. It is about how, uh, sen well, not sentient, but how cognitively sophisticated a species is. But yeah. why is that? So let me play devil's advocate sure, for a second. Why are we eating a cat? Why? Because they're not as smart as a dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. so exactly. So why is it that Tell we have that <laughs> standard, <laughs> that standard where if an animal is particularly intelligent, it's immoral to go after that animal or hunt mm -hmm. or kill that animal. But if it's a dumb animal, then OK, we can kill them as much as we want. And it's totally fine. Uh, again, playing devil's advocate, I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about that. Um, recently, Scientific American had this op-ed about it, and I thought it was interesting because we've never really questioned why that's our standard, mm -hmm. you know? Right. I think when you use a word like dumb, I think that's anthropomorphizing a bit. Like, I think it's, I think you can take animals with more complex nervous systems and just assume that they suffer more, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I agree. And I'm not saying that cows don't suffer. I mean, obviously the suffering is immense, but... Um, cows are very don't no, discredit no, them. I know, I know, I know. But I think, you know, on the one hand, like our own health is something that we should try to preserve. And, and I'm of the opinion that, that meat is healthy. And so if you're going to eat meat, you should do it from farms, pay a little more. I mean, the cost See, of the cost the of cheap meat is greater suffering. That's what I was going to say. That, day, and that's the problem know? is that not everyone can vote with their wallet, and not everyone has access. I mean, we can sit here, and I think you know, all of us maybe living in Los Angeles, and if you're a young professional or if you come from means, then you can choose to vote with your wallet. You can say, I'm not going to, you know, eat something that's part of you know an animal that's experienced cruelty. But if you have absolutely no money, or you're in a place where your food only can come from, I don't know, the local Walmart or the local grocer, and you don't know how that animal's treated, it's harder to vote with your wallet when your wallet is nearly empty. So that's where things like making sure where the larger responsibility becomes like we need to make sure the animals are treated ethically because people are still going to buy the cheaper meat. Sure. People are going to that don't have choices are going to buy whatever's the cheapest provided to them. So if we can limit the suffering on what's provided, we kind of have to because not everyone has the option. Well, we are limit limiting the suffering on animals, not just farm animals mm -hmm. too, but w the point I was making earlier, I just wanted to get back to it very quickly. Um, the, the strides that we've made recently, mm -hmm. the, the other strides were, uh, you know, well, after we passed Prop 2, Michigan did the next year in 2009, and then of course here at at a local level, um, just three months ago, we Los Angeles banned the use of bull hooks and baseball bats and axe handles to beat elephants in in the city. Jeez. So I mean, we're really, really becoming more and more progressive in our thinking. And what I think is so beautiful is the scientific community is now on board with us in, in terms of progressive thinking. And this was extraordinary. Um, Francis Collins, who's the director of the NIH, recently said that the use of chimpanzees in laboratories was largely unnecessary. And because of that, President Obama in November was able to uh, lift the cap on spending for retiring uh, ch federally owned chimpanzees in sanctuaries. Mm. And because of that, now 310 federally owned chimps are going to be released to sanctuary. This is extraordinarily powerful. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful new thrust right. in, in, in terms of how we think and how we uh, are living more, well, compassionate lives. Compassionately, yeah. yeah. So I want to go back to the issue of hunting because I feel like we're pretty liberal on this panel, right? <laughs> so, you know, I, I get the sense that we're all kind of against hunting for lions and black rhinos. But at the same time, you know, you want to consider the other perspective. What is the appeal of hunting something like a lion? Now, Melissa Bachman, who is known as a hunter, uh, was in the news recently because she hunted a lion and she took a picture of it and it made its rounds on the internet. People were outraged. Yeah. Um, so Max, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it, I think that she deserved the outrage because of the joy that she seemed to get from killing other creatures. You know, I think even the most morally ambiguous among us will recognize that like, can recognize that like the meat, eating meat is a necessary evil. It's an evil at the end of the day. I mean, Michelle Bachman, if you did a uh, YouTube search of her stuff, I mean, you could watch some of the episodes of that show. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was like as happy as, you know, a kid in a candy store with a gun shooting animals. Like, but I just thought I that- I give her credit for being one of the people that admits that she's happy about it and doesn't BS such as the winner of the Black Rhino auction. She's right. like, this is what I do, I hunt. I believe in the right for hunt. It's a trophy sport for me. It's been a tradition for years. I mean, hunting for sport goes back into almost our human DNA. People have done it for a long time. I 
understand that we people will argue that no, we've done it just for food and just because we've had you. But there's plenty of people who've done it just to show, like this is, is what there, I can conquer. Is there really something? Barbaric. Is there really <laughs> something that impressive about shooting a lion? I, I mean, when you're approaching a lion, no. you're a human, so they're not really afraid of you, <laughs> right? So they're just gonna sit there until you approach them, and then it's, boom. it's a conquer to me if the lion fan. had a gun in, in its, in its I, paw. I just think it's conqueror mentality. I think it's the same thing. People are gonna think I'm making a leap here, but think about it. It's the same thing that kind of gets tied to like maybe like attitudes of misogyny and other things. Is like when there's a conqueror, almost kind of testosterone-driven attitude towards something that something is my prey and I'm a predator, and that gives me power and energy. That excites certain people. I don't think it excites most people. And I think you're correct right. by saying most people understand there's like the moral imperative here and that it's a necessary evil. But there are people who simply derive their self-worth and pleasure from conquering and from doing things that they think put them on well, top of the kingdom. I, I will never. I, I have never been able to understand how the snuffing out of another's life is is of any interest to anyone. 100%. And and I so I don't understand the mentality and I think you're you're being incredibly kind and very very fair minded and I and I applaud you for that but I just can't I can't see that side of it. it the blood yeah. sport to me is it's really quite disgusting. I mean, it's so shallow. Yeah, I adore you exists. but I just have to say one thing. Sure. I don't think eating meat is a is a what, how did, what did you say? It was a necessity. A necessary, necessary, evil, necessary yeah. evil. It's not. It's not. I've been vegan for many, many years, and I'm thriving. So it's really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, there are people who have healthy lifestyles without eating meat. But I mean, I'm a meat eater myself. So um, you know, what? I think you know, <laughs> yeah. of all people, Rand Paul made an interesting point he, when he was last asked about this. I think it was Rand Paul when he said, you know, and, and everyone, I think, on the right side are people that eat meat use this argument. Yeah. But where do you think your meat comes from? Do you think it comes from the grocery? No. People actually have to kill the animals before right. they eat yeah. it. So I, mean, I might say that unless you've ever experienced killing an animal to eat it, maybe we should look at the way we eat meat because I've thought about that and drastically, I mean, I barely, I'm pretty much almost vegan now, even though I like bacon so much. It was such a problem for our little piggies. <laughs> but the point is somebody yeah. posed it to me, a vegan friend posed it to me and said, unless you have ever, at least one time in your life, killed an animal, not because it's necessary, I understand that we've moved past that, needing it, but one time in your life, kill an animal to eat it, if you feel like you can't do it, you shouldn't eat meat. And I was like, damn, girl. Well, look, I, <laughs> it's very difficult to get certain, uh, you know, in particular essential fats mm -hmm. from vegetables that you, I mean, you need, greens, greens. No, you uh, need, you need to get them guy. from fish. I mean, well, and you can't greens, massage you the oils out of the fish, you have to kill. Flaxseed and lentils, it's omega-3s. A, they, they don't convert. I mean, in flaxseed, you get ALA, they don't convert to All the right, EPA. Right. Okay, very <laughs> No, side but, track, I, but, but I also think I want to bring up that um, it's very important to promote things like lab-grown meat. Um, I mean, I, I think that's where the three hundred fifty thousand dollars would have been better what spent. What a great idea! Yeah, lab-grown meat. They basically take the stem cell of a cow and they can grow miles of filet mignon without ever having to kill another cow. That's would the sort you of be thing. one of the first people to try that? Like I would taste the shit out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah? yeah. All right. I would taste uh, the shit out of it. You're happen. on the record. Okay, okay cool. that will never happen until because the beef industry will obviously lobby so hard against that that that'll never happen until somebody in the scientific industry or the lab has enough money to lobby against yeah. them to have it make sense. Or we sense. could just get money out of politics, which we're trying we to do. do. Wolf-pack.com. Um, then we can actually uh, do things that make sense as opposed to helping corporations profit. But we gotta end on that note. I feel like this is the kind of topic that we can talk about forever. There are so many little gradations, as I mentioned. And just keep in mind that this is not a black or white issue. This is an issue where you have to take many things into consideration. Don't go off sending death threats to people that hunt. That's not the right way to handle it. You have to have a debate, and you have to weigh the pros and cons of the actions that we're taking.